So let's go to, well, we have our <coughs> state chart um, palette available here with the agent. And I'm going to add my first state, which will be called, and I use the prefix ST, and just say the state is cold. And this will also be my state chart entry point. This I'm going to call prefix ST temperature to indicate that this state chart deals with the temperature. On enter or on entry, I just want to always make sure that my current temperature when I am considered cold or in the state cold, that my variable temperature is set to be ambient. And indeed, we have done that in setting the initial value for variable temperature. But you'll see at a later stage why I want to add that here as well. So it may seem redundant. All right, the next state that we're going to add, I'm going to call ST heating. Here there will be no entry action or exit action, but the transition from state cold to heating will be based on some condition, not on a timeout, but on a condition. And the condition is whether this resource unit is actually busy. And since this class of ours, heated worker, uh, when we created it, we said it will be used in the flowchart as a resource unit. It therefore inherits from the resource unit. And therefore, when we actually call ourselves, and we can do this in Java by either using this or simply ignoring it, and we look at our methods, you will see that there are methods that is actually indicating whether this resource unit is actually busy or whether it is idle. And we're going to use these methods in this particular case. So as soon as the method is busy evaluates to true, this transition will be taken from state cold to state heating. And I'm going to now add another transition from heating. Just add a few points here. from heating to itself. And here I'm going to use a timeout trigger. And what I want to happen while it's heating is that the current temperature should be increased by a certain amount. So I'm taking my current temperature. And let's say we add 0 0.05 degrees Celsius to our current temperature every second. If nothing else happens. So if I stay in state heating, and I do want to make a comment here at this point in time, that you might also prefer to actually add the state transition in that way. The slight difference, and you can read up about this in the help function for state charts in AnyLogic. The difference between the two is that, although visually more appealing, the one that I've drawn first, and let me just add the transition there, transition heating, and I want to show the name so that we can keep track of it. The difference between connecting a state with itself from the out, kind of via the outside versus what the uh, from the inside, is whether the entry actions and the exit actions will actually actually be triggered. If we follow the external transition, 
every time that that transition is taken, it will fire when it leaves. It will fire the exit action and as well the entry action. Whereas when we do it this way, transition from heating to itself, it is actually an internal transition and therefore neither the exit, exit nor the entry actions will be fired. In our particular case, we're not adding any, so the outcome of the two will be exactly the same. Add the transition name there as well. And I'm going to call this transition get busy. And I use the prefix TR to indicate what I'm busy with. All right. So next what I want to do is I'm going to keep on heating until the unit becomes idle again. At that point in time, I'm going to move to a different state, which I'm going to call state cooling. Again, I'm not going to add any entry or exit actions. And our transition from heating is going to be based on a condition and again, it will check whether this unit is idle. Similar to the previous one. The transition, I'm going to call get idle. And I want the name to actually show. So if I am heating, if I'm currently busy, I will keep on heating until this resource unit actually becomes idle again. At that point in time, it will move, instead of keep on heating, it will move via this transition to state cooling. Something similar will now happen. <clears throat> I will keep on cooling this unit. I'm going to call that transition cooling. I want to show the name. And the action that should be taken again, this will happen every second, is I want to deduct let's say 0. 0.075 degrees Celsius from my current temperature. So we assume that we actually cool down faster than what we actually heat up. I will stay in state cooling and keep on reducing my temperature until one of two things happen. Either, either I become busy again, which means I will move to state heating. So I'm first going to add a state which I'm going to call get busy again. And I want to show this name. And this will again not be triggered by a timeout, but by a condition. And the condition is busy. And I don't have to put the this in front to call this particular method. So I directly have access to this method. So if I am cooling down, I'm idle and I become busy again, I'm being requested somewhere, then is busy will evaluate to true and I will move back into heating. Alternatively, I will cool down long enough until I get back to state cold. And for that, I add the last transition. And here, again, it will be triggered by a condition, and that is if my current temperature actually gets to less than or equal to the parameter ambient. 
This transition I'm going to call tr get cold. And I want to show the name. Oops, it is not connected. There you go. That will bring me back to probably makes more sense to put it down there. <clears throat> and that will take me back to state cold, at which point I will stay in that state until the resource unit gets busy again, which means it will heat up, keep on increasing its temperature until it becomes idle again, at which point it will reduce its temperature and keep on doing that until it becomes busy again, repeating the cycle, or it can cool down long enough until it actually gets cold. As the temperature is updated and update color runs every second, which calls update the color function, you will see that the entity, the resource unit, actually changes color as the simulation runs. We can speed this up. Our units are currently white, and as soon as they start moving, they turn to green. And you will actually see that the busier they get, they actually do quickly turn yellow. And if they stay idle long enough, they turn back white again. If we hit send this kind of long enough, we might actually see them turn orange. In this case, they cool down too quickly. So we can play around with the model. Let's say we do the temperature reduction at a slower rate. Let's say slightly less than the, the heating rate. And we might now actually see the units not cool down as easily or as quickly and actually turn yellow quicker. As they become very busy, one of them actually turns orange. And if this carries on, they might turn eventually turn red. All right. So I hope this video has been helpful to show you that you can embed a lot of additional logic, such as, such as state charts, into resource units and not just custom entities that gets moved through your your simulation model. Hope you enjoyed it.